الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله وهي tonight in the library of our Sheikh Thul Fiqar Ibrahim Mayman حفظه الله on the 12th of Jamad al 1445 corresponding to the 25th of December 2023 and الحمد لله Sheikh I've heard the good news that inshallah you'll be teaching about the legacy the tarjuma of Al Imam Al Bukhari rahimahullah can you tell us why you've chosen to teach this? <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda. Wa deen al haqqi li yudhirahu ala al-deen kulli. Wa kafa billahi shaheeda. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. As to what proceeds. After praising Allah the Most High, who is separated from His creation, in a manner which befits His Majesty, we love and veneration exclusively for Him. And then requesting He, the Most High, to send His Salah and Salam upon our final Prophet and Messenger, Khatim al Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Qurashi, alayhi salatu was salam. During my summer holidays, whilst I was studying, at the Islamic University of Medina, I traveled from Medina to India and I visited Jamia Salafiyya, Banaras, India to study <coughs> Sahih al Bukhari with the Sheikh al Hadith of Jamia Salafiyya, Banaras, Mufti Muhammad Rais Nadwi, in the year 1427 after Hijrah corresponding to 2006. The Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala motivated me to study and then teach the biography of Imam al-Bukhari Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He mentioned three main reasons why a person should study the biography and the life of Imam al-Bukhari Rahimahullah Ta'ala. The first being one of the most interesting biographies a student of knowledge will ever read will be the biography of <coughs> Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. Secondly, the biography of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala will inspire you and others to seek knowledge seriously and help you uh, achieve lofty aspirations. The third, the biography of Imam al-Bukhari outlines his legacy which was to promote and propagate the madhab of the Ahlul Hadith aqidatan wa fiqhan in terms of aqidah and the jurisprudence and it should be known that his book which is famously known as Sahih al-Bukhari is not only a book of reference for hadith that belongs on the shelf rather it's an encyclopedia and a corpus of fiqh as well Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala uh, combined fiqh and hadith together known as fiqh al-sunnah or fiqh al-hadith so in conclusion I have seen um, implicit attacks on the Ahlul Hadith with regards to their madhab being belittled and such claims being made that they have no usul al-fiqh or they have no fiqh then this book is a response to their old school arguments and allegations <coughs> now so you mentioned a book you'd like to be teaching a book mm. which book in particular would you want to cover inshallah so the book uh, which will we which we will be studying bi ta'ala and reading through is known as Siratul Imam al Bukhari Rahimullah Ta'ala. The legacy of Imam al Bukhari Rahimullah Ta'ala by the noble Sheikh Abdul Salam bin Sheikh Khan Muhammad bin Amanullah bin Hishamuddin Mubarak Puri Rahimullah Ta'ala who was born in the year eighteen seventy two. Uh, and died in the year 1923, corresponding to 1289 after Hijrah to 1226 
to 1324 after Hijrah. Uh, this sheikh was a student of the great Imam uh, Sayyid Nadir Hussain al Dahlawi rahimahullah ta'ala and a student of the great uh, Yemeni scholar known as Al Qadi Hussain ibn Muhsin al Yamani al Khazraji rahimahullah ta'ala. He obtained an ijazah from both of these great scholars in the year. 1309 after Hijrah corresponding to 1891. So the first edition of this book uh, was printed in 1911 corresponding to 1329 after Hijrah when the Sheikh was alive and he wrote this book in the Urdu language. His son who was also another great and major scholar of Hadith known as Lama Ubaidullah Mubarak Puri Rahimullah the commentator or the Sharih of Mishkatul Masabih, known as Mir'atul Mafatih, published the second edition of this book in uh, 1946, corresponding to 1366 after Hijrah, when he was teaching at the famous Ahlul Hadith Madrasa, known as Darul Hadith uh, Rahmaniyya in Delhi. An Arabic translation was done by the Ahlul Hadith scholar uh, from Mecca. Uh, Sheikh Dr. Abdul Alim ibn Abdul Azim al Bastawi. Its first edition was published in the year 2001, corresponding to 1422 after Hijrah. The, the Sheikh edited the text and added beneficial notes, footnotes to it, and it was published in two volumes. May Allah have mercy on his soul. Mm. And this edition is very beneficial as the Sheikh verifies most of the narrations that can be found. In this book. An English translation uh, of the book was also published by Jami Salafiya Banaras, India. Its first edition was published in 1984, translated by Muhammad Rafiq Khan. May Allah elevate his status. Uh, the translation uh, has many errors and was summarized where a lot of important sections uh, were omitted. So when I was there in 2006, uh, I met with the principal of Jami Salafiya and he requested and granted me permission to revise and edit the translation and republish it. But due to my busy studies when I returned back to Medina, at the Islamic University of Medina, I was not able to complete uh, this task as I would have liked to do so, uh, as everything is achieved we know with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I have some good news that last year, uh, one of my students, he retranslated and revised the current translation and made a comparison between uh, the translations under my supervision. So the translation is, its draft is on my desk here in Medina, in my library, and requires for me to proofread and edit the, the work or the translation and we intend to publish uh, the translation if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills very soon and may Allah reward the student with good who worked hard on this translation now and Sheikh you mentioned that the Sheikh wrote the book in the Urdu language mm. and it's well known that the Sheikh was very capable of writing in the Arabic language why did he write it in the Urdu language as opposed to in Arabic so as you know that in the subcontinent, there were many people who were targeting the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa There were those who rejected hadith and the sunnah. There were those who were influenced by modernism and colonial powers. And at the same time, there were certain people uh, like Shibli Nu'mani Hanafi, uh, the famous author of the biography of his Imam Abu Hanifa, who challenged the integrity of the scholars of Hadith and Al-Bukhari uh, particularly. And he wrote his works in the Urdu language. So in order to defend Imam Al-Bukhari academically without being biased or prejudiced, Sheikh Abdul Salam Barakuri Rahimullah wrote the book 
uh, in the Urdu language and he answered most of the doubts and the allegations that were made by uh, Shibri Nomani Hanafi. So the, con the content of the book uh, is divided mainly into two parts. Mm. The first part dealing with its biography, having about 14 chapters. And the second part dealing with his works and writings and legacy, etc. Having about 21 chapters, concluding with an epilogue. So I shall be adding uh, beneficial notes, annotations and a detailed commentary uh, to the reading if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. And this book is not just a biography of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, but this book contains many things that can be learnt. And it's an introduction to many different sciences, especially hadith and fiqh. It uh, reconciles uh, and harmonizes uh, fiqh and hadith based upon the methodology of the fuqaha of Ahl al-Hadith, the jurists of the Ahl al-Hadith, of how they did not see fiqh and hadith to be separate, but they saw that fiqh al-Hadith or fiqh al-Sunnah uh, to be one entity. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we read this biography, we're able to benefit from it, uh, reflect uh, upon our lives and better ourselves and try to follow the footsteps of Imam al-Bukhari رحمه الله تعالى وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين